T4 syndrome causes sharp stabbing pain right in the middle of the upper back. There may also be radiating symptoms like numbness, tingling, and pain into the neck, shoulder, the entire arm, hand, fingers, and even to the fingertips. Since this is a common problem, yet it's rarely diagnosed by healthcare professionals, you may get treatment that does not help you. In this video, I'll be sharing with you 10 treatments that actually make upper back pain from T4 syndrome worse. The first treatment is a back extension exercise. This is done in a variety of different ways. Two of the most common ways to do back extension exercises are through bird dogs and supermans. Here's what those exercises look like. A bird dog is where you're on all fours, hands and knees, and then you lift up one leg while picking up the opposite arm. You might hold it or you might do reps where you alternate legs and arms. And the point of this exercise is to exercise to strengthen or work the muscles that are in the back, that are directly in the middle part of the spine, right where the T4 syndrome problem happens. And the Superman exercise is where you lie face down like this and you're picking up your arms and your legs at the same time. This exercise is your back muscles. You might stretch out your arms, you might just pick up the upper half or just pick up the lower half. Either way, these two exercises strengthen the muscles that are directly on the back of the spine and getting muscles stronger there tends to add more compression to the T4 syndrome area which makes the disc and ligament problem there worse. The second is rowing exercises. This is any sort of exercise where you're pulling in this direction while trying to squeeze the shoulder blades together to exercise the muscles that are in the middle between the shoulder blades because it's in that area that the problem tends to happen. However, using these muscles back there tends to add more compression to the T4 disc and ligaments, which will make it worse in the long run. Some exercises that you may end up doing that involve rowing are cable rows, like where you attach to a cable, you're holding on a bar, and you're pulling in this direction, sticking out your chest and pitching your shoulder blades back. Sometimes we'll do the same exercise using large rubber bands, they call them TheraBands. You're, you, you have the bands tied around a post or a pole or something and you're pulling in this direction. You may also use a rowing machine that has a seat that can slide forward and back on a rail and you pull a rower like, like you're actually rowing a boat and you're trying to pinch your shoulder blades together to work the muscles that are between your spine right where the back problem is. And the fourth version is weighted rows. You might hold a weight, like a dumbbell, possibly even a barbell. You typically will bend over just like this and you're pulling in this direction to pinch your shoulder blades together and work out that center part of the spine. Now face value, it would make sense, and, and they'll explain it to you this way, that you have to work out the muscles that are right in the area where it hurts because those muscles might be weak is what they'll say, or that's what they do is work out muscles in the area where it hurts. They're just exhaustively trying to exercise muscles in the area, but this adds compression to the discs and ligaments, so it's not a good thing to be doing for the long term. If you do get relief, it might be temporary because the muscle will get fatigued and tired. It might, for a time, might actually take pressure off the disc and the, and the ligaments as it gets tired. Just like if you get a really good arm workout and your arms are so tired that you can't even pick it up to, to feed yourself or drink something or scratch a niche on your head. But then over time, the muscle recovers and it gets even stronger. And in your back, it'll add more compression gradually as the weeks go by of doing these exercises. The next one is backward bending stretches. There's a variety of different ways to do this. Sometimes they'll have you do it leaning on the backrest of a chair and leaning over the edge. Sometimes you'll be on a foam roller lying on the floor or on a mat and you're rolling onto the foam roller. Or you might just be sitting or standing. You might be instructed to lean backwards this way just like that. That kind of a motion makes the vertebrae, the bones in the spine, bend too far backwards and typically they're already overstretched in that direction. Here's what I mean by they're overstretched in that direction. When the discs and ligaments get loose here because there's stiffness up above and stiffness down low, this part of the back that's supposed to be slightly rounded out, they call that kyphosis, it kind of flattens out because there's less stability in the area. And so if you're leaning backwards and this part's flattened out, it's not curved out as it's supposed to be, then you're actually feeding the problem. You're making the curve go further in and flatten out further. This keeps the discs injured and the ligaments injured as well. Now, fourth one is twisting stretches for the back. And that's where you'll 
twist this way and twist that way. And it's a similar process that happens with backwards bending. You're putting too much force through this part of the spine and keeping the discs and ligaments overstretched for a longer time than they need to be. The fifth one is an exercise called T's and Y's. This is commonly done in physical therapy clinics and there's many different ways to do it, but the most common way to do it is with TheraBands, with those yellow rubber bands, sometimes they're green or blue, there's all different colors. And a T motion is where you go out this way, where you extend your arms and open them this way. And a Y motion is where you go up like the letter Y, just like this. And the point of these T's and Y exercises is to get the muscles that are right in this area to fatigue and strengthen eventually. But like I said, with the rows, you're going to strengthen muscles that don't need to be strengthened. They're going to add more compression to this area and actually injure the disc and ligaments further. Now, oftentimes there's shoulder pain associated with T4 syndrome. So you might be encouraged or told to do shoulder stretches. There's different ways to do it. One of the more common ones is where you put your arm against the wall like this and you stretch out. This stretches the front side of your shoulder. You might get told to move your arm this way or come up and over this way. There's all different kinds of shoulder stretches, but what this does, it's probably not beneficial to you if you have T4 syndrome, is it stretches out the nerves that come off the spine and go down into the arm. They have to pass through the shoulder and stretching irritated nerves is not a good thing. It makes them stay irritated for longer. So even though it might feel good because you have stiff muscles in the area, doing this stretch in the short term may help, but in the long term it keeps the nerves irritated. Number seven is neck stretching. Sometimes you'll be told to do this type of neck stretch or turn all the way, all the way, or go all the way backwards or all the way down. And it's a similar thing to like what I explained with the shoulder. You have nerves that come off your thoracic spine, your upper back that go up into your neck. This is part of the sympathetic nervous system. I have more on that in other videos here on our channel. Which by the way, you can find a playlist for T4 syndrome help down in the description below. There's a link for that. And we've got a bunch of videos that explain more about T4 syndrome, including what to do to help it that will actually work. But you don't want to be stretching out your neck because those nerves from the sympathetic nervous system come up into your neck and head. And if you're doing this to stretch them, you're going to overstretch irritated nerves. And that's not going to be beneficial for you in the long term. Number eight is dry needling. Now dry needling is a newer form of treatment often done by physical therapists. And the reason why it's called dry needling is because they're putting a needle into your skin and into the muscle and it's dry. In other words, it's not injecting anything like a doctor's injection would be. That's wet needling. So they're trying to get the muscle in the area to spasm, to contract. It's kind of painful for a lot of people, but then it does provide relief afterwards for a short time, for usually days, potentially a week or two. Now dry needling the muscles of the back may give you some short-term pain relief, but it's not solving the root problem that's going to get you more mobility in the upper part of the spine above where it hurts and in the lower part of the spine below where it hurts. So I'm okay with people getting dry needling done for this condition. I just want you to have the right expectation about it. It's not going to fix it. It's only going to mitigate the pain so that you can get a little bit more comfortable, potentially sleep well if you're having trouble sleeping at night because the symptoms from T4 syndrome, that sharp stabbing, searing, kind of burning pain that happens right in the middle of the back can get quite intense and people can get very desperate for finding pain relief for this problem. Which takes me to number nine, pain medications. Very often people will take pain medications for this and that's okay too, just like with the dry needling, just to take the edge off and get more comfortable, get better sleep, but it's not something you should ideally be relying on for the long term as a solution to fix T4 syndrome because of course there's side effects of taking pain medications. It can affect your liver, your kidney, your brain, other internal organs that are very important for you. But using pain medication in the short term to get through the day or possibly tolerate some exercises that are going to be beneficial for you, that's a better strategy. And coming in at number 10 is pain injections. So that's injected medication directly in the area where you have pain. Sometimes this is done and this can be more effective than taking pain medication by mouth, but it's the same long-term situation. It's not going to fix the root of the problem. It's not going to make you more mobile in your spine where you're stiff above the T4 area and below the T4 area. It's just a band-aid solution that lasts a little bit longer than taking oral pain medication. If you do feel like you need to go get an injection for pain medication, that's totally fine. Just make sure 
that you have the right expectations. It's not going to solve the problem. You're going to use this time that you now have some relief to get good sleep, to be able to tolerate more exercise. It's going to help you out. And you can learn more about addressing the root muscle imbalances of T4 syndrome by watching that playlist down in the link below in the description. If you thought this video was helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up. Please like it and also share this with somebody you think needs to hear this. this there's not enough information about this anywhere on the internet. This isn't a well-researched topic. So please help share this information with somebody because you might be changing their life dramatically. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on our notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of the helpful videos that we post each and every week. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.